Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking that created them. And let's face it, we have a problem. Many students are not confident in math and they are also not taking creative risks. I'm going to be honest. I never really loved math in high school. Sorry, Jenny. Um, I, I earned good grades in math, but I wasn't overly confident and I definitely wasn't excited about it. I was the student who found myself asking, how am I gonna use this in real life? What I did have was a sense of value, passion, and purpose for the arts and for creating things that didn't exist. In high school, I would say I was a well-rounded student who genuinely loved learning, but I definitely loved math the most. And in fact, I used to save my math homework as a reward for completing all my other homework ahead of time. I was definitely a bit of a math nerd, and I'm no longer ashamed to admit that. Wouldn't have been friends. <laughs> but that being said, I was also a memorizer. I couldn't explain why something worked mathematically or what I could use it for. I just knew how to do it. And like Laura, I had good grades in math, but I wasn't making connections between math and the world around me. This is a challenging problem. How do we create opportunities for critical thinking to create a deeper understanding of both visual and mathematical concepts? Take this student artwork for example. Think about what you see in this work and how you interpret it. As a math teacher, the first thing that jumps out at me is the different shapes in the background, and I'm making connections to area and perimeter. You might also notice the different lines and curves and be wondering how could I describe those using appropriate terminology or maybe even connect them to a mathematical equation. As a visual arts teacher, I see a student expressing emotions and an exploration of the imagination. Maybe you're seeing somebody who's experimenting with the use of colors and lines. This type of blended back and forth conversation isn't happening in a traditional math class or a typical art class. But when you combine art and math together, we have these conversations all the time. Art and math are the world's universal languages. We should be having these conversations all the time. While we have seen a lot of positive developments in our approaches to teaching and learning, these are only the beginning of the changes that we need to, to see happen in order to create the classrooms of the now. And many subjects are still being taught in departmental silos. And when we have this mindset of departments and we see subjects as isolated, it also isolates our students' way of thinking, causing them to see subjects and their teachers as separate learning experiences. When we're in a world of connections, we wanted to help our students to see those connections in order for them to think critically, to take action, to problem solve. Secondary school students in particular tend to go through their day moving from one subject to the next. The bell rings, they might go to art, and they turn their brain on for art, and they turn it off. The bell rings again, they come to math. They turn their brain on for math, or at least we're really hoping that they do, <laughs> and then they turn it off, and it really compartmentalizes their thinking. Nothing in this world happens in isolation. Why are we still teaching our students to learn this way? By modeling and delivering curriculum in this way, students often focus on either their left brain or their right brain functions, depending on which subject they are in. For example, math is typically thought to utilize left brain functions like logic and reasoning. Art is typically thought to utilize right brain functions like imagination and intuition. This led us to question, could we take two completely different subjects, completely different curriculums, and blend them together to deliver them in a way to create a justifiable learning experience. Deliver them in a way where students were intentionally using both halves of their brain at the same time. Two halves makes a whole, right Jenny? A whole <laughs> lot of sense. We know that that was cheesy, but we had to throw it in there. <laughs> What we didn't predict was how much sense that this program would make for the vast learning needs of our students. We have a short video that shows some highlights from our semester, and it starts with an audio clip from one of our students giving her perspective on the program. It's like one of those classes that gets you up in the morning and like you're excited to go because you never really know what's going to happen in this class. It's really, really fun, and you learn different ways of doing what you thought would be hard.
This is the first time in the province that art and math have been intentionally bundled together in this way for an entire semester. We feel really fortunate to work in a city like London, where the Thames Valley District School Board supports initiatives to rethink the structure of secondary schools. This in combination with the flexibility and support from our principal really demonstrates the positive direction that schools are starting to make. In the Art of Math program, students are earning their grade nine visual arts credit simultaneously with either their grade nine applied or their grade nine academic math credit. Providing both options gives flexibility for parents who may not know which choice is best for their student going into grade nine. And the structure of the program also makes it possible for them to switch pathways early on if needed. Students are together the entire morning earning both credits with an emphasis on project-based learning. Our hope was to maintain the integrity of the arts by allowing students to be creative and experimental with their ideas, while also being able to communicate mathematical concepts through a variety of different approaches. They do not move from math to art, and the curriculum is blended and intertwined to create deeper and more global connections. A globally competent student needs to be able to navigate problems and material based on a situation, not based on a subject area. By team teaching and blending these subjects together, we are able to teach transferable skills, enhance creative insights, and bridge that gap to make those connections. Breaking down the silo mentality shifts student focus from marks to valuable understanding, and it empowers their learning. The top three job attributes that will be needed by the year 2020 are complex problem solving, critical thinking, and creativity, as stated by the World Economic Forum. We wanted to provide students with the opportunity to develop these skills while also improving numeracy. Jenny and I are team teaching. As you can see, it's very important to dress the same all the time. Just kidding. <laughs> I wanted to for the TEDx and we thought it would be too cheesy, so here we are. In all seriousness, because we are team teaching, students now have access to both subject experts for a longer period of time than they would in a traditional classroom. Pedagogically, this makes us better teachers because we now have more time to get to know the students on a personal level. It also means that we're modeling what positive relationships, collaboration, and working together truly means. And Laura and I will have different ideas that we'll talk about right in front of our students. I might be teaching a math lesson and Laura will add, if you have the students draw that, the concept, concept would be much more visual. They become part of our learning process, and it helps them to see that we all learn differently, even as educators, which builds their confidence to start advocating for their own learning needs. We problem solve collectively. The expert is the room. Our goal was try, try to make learning, questioning, and connections visible. Through team teaching, we are also able to assess, reflect, and grow together. Last year, I worked with a team of teachers on a project that was funded by the Teacher Learning and Leadership Program through the Ministry of Education. We investigated the impact of collaborative learning on student success in mathematics. Our results suggested that those students who were given more frequent and more intentional opportunities to work in collaboration retained information longer. And these students did better on their final exams and summative projects than when compared to their peers who were taught in a more traditional classroom. For this reason, Laura and I really wanted to make collaborative learning a key component of our program. And one project that we gave to our students was introduced on a field trip. And I need to pause for a moment and just express how excited I am that I even got to go on a field trip because that hardly ever happens in math. And we went, we went to a skate park and we had students in groups and we asked them, how will you design, build, and paint your own model of a skate park ramp? We shared that their ramps would be included in a community show and that other students and community members who didn't take the art of math would attend that show to learn from their ramps. This gave them a sense of accountability and purpose. Students had to work together, and through the process, they developed skills that went way beyond our subject areas. They had to learn to problem solve. They had to learn to work with different personality types. And while there were check-in points with both Laura and myself, it was mainly self-directed. Students began to see their own strengths, and they began to see that everyone has value and everyone has something to contribute. 
When we asked students to reflect on this project, the part that they enjoyed the most was being able to display the ramp in our final show, in our art show, which you can see here. Creating with purpose made them feel that what they were doing mattered. And it's really important to remember, when you're trying to create something that doesn't have one exact right answer, it can be more challenging. And it might feel unnatural to let go of structure. And so in order to really develop critical thinking and innovation, we couldn't just show another regular math question in order to make those connections. For example, here is a typical math worksheet. If we asked you to solve these questions, would it be memorable? Would you be able to describe your work? in a year or even a month from now? No. Prior to teaching, I worked for North America's leading infield marketing company, and their philosophy wasn't to tell consumers what to think. It was to create a memorable experience, to immerse the consumer so they could engage and connect with the product. We can do this in education through experiential learning. Here's an artwork solving similar math problems. When students were asked to solve problems in this way, they were excited to ignite their creativity, to think for themselves. They were having fun. Some parents even told us that they were going to frame their work. Whoever framed math homework? <laughs> Not even me. <laughs> in both cases, students were working with the same concepts, but now they were invested in discovering the answers. In our class, we had students who were locally developed, applied, academic, and enriched, all completing the same art projects. But the flexibility of those projects allowed students to adapt the math to challenge their own success. For our enriched students, this meant that sometimes they were pushing the envelope and asking questions that went beyond curriculum expectations. As a result, students were able to make connections to art and math in the world around them without being prompted by a textbook, a test question, or even their teacher. I know Jenny is dying right now, and she's hoping I give her this cue um, to share a story. I'm really excited because I got to go on a second field trip. <laughs> and on this field trip, we went to an art gallery, and the guide that was with my group prompted students to comment on what they saw in a particular piece of artwork. The first student to speak began describing the ratio of land to sky. Another student was commenting on the use of lines and the different areas that would be created by combining shapes together. I was shocked. Students were making connections to math in a context where I would have fully expected them to be thinking only about art. They were brief comments, but for me, they were a highlight of the trip. As a result, students were able to come back to class. They were motivated to create their own artworks with intention. Artist critiques became opportunities for students to share and learn from one another about both art and math. Traditionally, as we know, math is assessed by a test or a worksheet. Now we are asking students to come to class prepared to talk about math through something that they were comfortable with, something that they created, their artworks. And for some students, connecting math to their artwork motivated them to do more math than we believe they would have in a traditional classroom setting. At the end of the semester, I had a conversation with one of our reluctant math learners to give her some suggestions of how to combine math concepts with her final art project. She went away and came back a few days later, and she had completely changed the plan. And honestly, her ideas were even better than the ones that I had given her. But she spoke with purpose and she spoke with confidence because she was invested in the process. Over the years of teaching visual arts, I've had hardworking, dedicated, honor roll students express to me how they dreaded, dreaded going to math class. And they felt anxious about an upcoming test, just really lacking confidence. So it's really reassuring for us to now see students coming to class feeling confident in math. Completing their artworks reinforced that they also understood their math and it put them in a better mental state. In fact, early on in the semester, we had some students who expressed concerns that they weren't learning enough math because they didn't feel stressed enough. And I can honestly say, this has never ever happened in my entire career. There was a buzz in our building about the Art of Math program to the point that students who weren't even in our course were participating in projects over the lunch hour. Students were learning the same curriculum and the same concepts as other classes. They were just learning it in a different way. By the end of the semester, it really did become the Art of Math family. 
One boy after the provincial standardized test said something to me in the hallway that I never will forget. He said, wow, we must have actually done work this year. I was looking at the questions and I didn't even know where the answers were coming from. I just knew them. At first I was about to respond, um, yes, we did work this year. But then I realized the learning was happening so naturally that he wasn't even aware of it. Another student said to me, I always thought I wasn't smart enough or good enough at math. I just realized I wasn't learning it in a way that made sense to me. Now I feel capable. And you can tell my voice that that really stuck with me. Now I feel capable. Later that day, I called Jenny and I knew that she must have had teary eyes because I could hear it through the phone. And I probably did because <laughs> after this first day of standardized testing, I sat down to look over student responses. And as I read, I am sure I became very distracting to the other math teachers trying to do work in the math office because I was literally shouting out, yes, as I read their answers. <laughs> I was so proud of what they had written down because I knew how far each student had come with their understanding of concepts. We were assessing more than just art of math. So we needed to use a reporting tool that also tracked their development and progress in the global competencies. We don't just have one way of communicating, so we need to be able to adapt our ways of communicating to reflect and speak to the people who are listening to us. We asked, how do educators continue to create opportunities for critical thinking while developing a deeper understanding of visual and mathematical concepts? But this is about more than just art of math. This is about why we became educators in the first place. We need to be asking, what is best for our students? And we need to be willing to adapt, change, and grow based on what the answer to that question looks like. If you give students the opportunity to make connections and see things differently, it empowers their learning. While our goal was to blend the concepts of art and math, we soon realized that we were blending and building a lot more than two subjects. We all need to continue, continue providing opportunities for students that cultivate imagination with connections to the world beyond the classroom. When we work together, we can learn together and we can create a memorable experience. Well, we began with a valuable yet traditional quote from Einstein. We wanted to conclude with something from our future. So we thought we would end our talk with a quote from one of our students who said, if you look close enough, there is always math in art. Thank you. <laughs>